Good morning everybody and God has created another miracle. A lovely summer day with me up at half past eight to enjoy it. Isn't that wonderful? Now today we are celebrating uh, the life and work of Bishop Richard of Chichester of whom more later on but I think he has at least three connections with us today and that's very odd for a man of the 12th century. So without more ado, let's get to morning prayer. Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the start of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our first hymn is Jesus is Lord of all the earth. And it has quite a catchy refrain, so um, that's the first thing that comes up. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give praise to his name. Jesus is Lord of all the earth. He is the King of creation. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give praise to his name. God has proclaimed the just reward, life for us all. Alleluia, 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 give thanks for the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give praise to his name. Come, let us praise the living God, joyfully sing to our Saviour. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks for the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give praise to his name. And our readings for today are firstly an extract from Psalm 119 verses 72 to 80. So if you'd care to join me, please do so. The law of your mouth is dearer to me than a hoard of gold and silver. Your hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. Those who fear you will be glad when they see me, because I have hoped in your word. I know, O Lord, that your judgments are right, and in very faithfulness you cause me to be troubled. Let your faithful love be my comfort according to your promise to your servant. Let your tender mercies come to me, that I may live, for your law is my delight. Let the proud be put to shame, for they wrong me with lies but I will mediate on your commandments. Let those who fear you turn to me, even those who know your testimonies. Let my heart be sound in your statutes, that I may not be put to shame. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our Gospel reading comes from the 10th chapter of Romans. Brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer to God for them is that they may be saved. I can testify that they have found a zeal for God, but it is not enlightened. For being ignorant of the righteousness that comes from God and seeking to establish their own, they have not submitted to God's righteousness. For Christ is the end of the law, so there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. 
Now I said I'd tell you a little more about Richard of Chichester. Firstly, Richard is war was almost a local lad. He was born in um, the vicinity of the village of Witch um, in the Burford area, and Witch these days has grown somewhat and is known as Droitwich. He and his older brother were uh, left as orphans at an early age, so they were put into wardship until the elder brother came of age. And when he did so, there was an almighty equivalent to death duties to be paid, which vastly impoverished the estate that they had inherited. So for a while, uh, there was a proposal that Richard should marry quite a wealthy heiress, but by that time he had thought that his way ahead was not with the farm, so he politely declined the offer of a wife and suggested that this lady might like to marry his brother instead. And he went to Oxford where he became a scholar of canon law, a very good scholar of canon, that is church law. And he studied both at Oxford and in France and in Italy and made quite a few influential friends and patrons. Indeed, when he returned to England, one of these patrons became the Lord Chancellor and Bishop of Canterbury. And after a couple of um, stints as a parish preach, living in very parish preacher and priest, living in very humble circumstances, Richard was ordained Bishop of Chichester. Now that wasn't easy because uh, you will remember that in the previous reign of Henry II, Becket and the King had, had become enemies after being sound drinking companions for many years. And it didn't end well for Becket in that he was murdered in his Cathedral of Canterbury. It didn't end well for Henry II either because he was forced to do very public penance by the Pope. Well, we're now in the reign of Henry III, who wanted to put his own candidate on the bishop's seat in Chichester. And uh, for two years, until the Pope threatened him with uh, excommunication, um, Richard was not able to take up this position and had to live very humbly with a friend in one of the parishes locally. He did establish himself, however, as Bishop of Chichester finally, and became a very great advocate, as you would expect, of canon law. As Becket did, he expected priests to be governed by canon law. He expected them to be single men, because many had secretly married and had a wife and children. And he expected them to be able to communicate the Bible, in particular the Gospels and the New Testament, uh, clearly to the people, because there had been a habit coming of them rushing the mass through, mumbling it very incoherently, and the parish parishioners came out of church none the wiser for having gone to Sunday service. So um, he insisted that the priests were not to get married, uh, that there was no inheritance for their wives or children if they chose to secretly marry, they could not um, have the benefits of more than one parish's income, which forced them to concentrate on where their efforts should lie. And he was for simplicity, for clarity, for learning. And this is how we come to know him today. Because those of you who know the uh, musical Godspell will recognise his words. They come up at the end of our service and it is a threefold prayer, and I just turn to it very clearly, uh, if I can find it. Not easy turning over two pages in one. It comes in the special prayer, which we will read shortly. And he wishes that we would know God more clearly, love him more dearly and follow him more nearly day by day. And these were incorporated not only into a lovely hymn, but into one of the uh, musical songs day by day 
in Godspell. Not bad for a man of the 12th century to be linked to a 20th century, uh, 20th century musical. Or is that 21st? 20th, 20th century musical. So we turn now to the responsory and please respond with the words in bold type. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Our second hymn is Hail to the Lord's Anointed. Hail to the Lord's Anointed, great David's greatest son. Hail in the time appointed, his reign on earth begun. He comes to break oppression, to set the captives free. To take away transgression and rule in equity. He comes with succour speedy to those who suffer wrong. To help the poor and needy and bid the weak be strong. To give them songs for sighing, their darkness turn to light. Whose souls condemned and dying were precious in his sight. For every foe victorious, he on his throne shall rest. From age to age more glorious, all blessing and, and all blessed. The tide of time shall never his covenant remove. His name shall stand for ever. That name to us is love. And we come now to our time of intercessions where we offer our prayers for the whole community of God. And each section of prayer will end with the words, Lord, in your mercy. With the response, please, hear our prayer. So, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all who have the care of souls and are entrusted with helping others to repentance and giving them good counsel. We pray for those called to speak God's values, whatever the danger, and regardless of popularity. And we look forward to the end of this month to the new clergy that will be ordained by the bishops. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer our prayers for those who refuse to allow injustice or evil to go unchallenged. For all who are under pressure to behave wrongly or to keep quiet about something they know to be wrong. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for more loving forgiveness in all our relationships, of more self-knowledge, the grace to recognise that when we are in the wrong and the courage to seek God's forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those imprisoned by guilt, by resentment, bitterness and self-pity, that they may come to know the relief of being forgiven. We pray for all innocent victims, that their scars may be completely healed. And in this time when we focus on health, we pray for all those who are suffering in body, mind or spirit, that they may find your healing 
and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died in the faith and those who have died unprepared to meet you. Have mercy on us all and surround their loved ones with the comfort of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord God, for the wideness of your mercy and the completeness of your forgiveness, which restores us to you in such great joy. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now for the collect of the day. Remember this prayer which brings us together. Most merciful Redeemer, who gave your Bishop Richard a love of learning, a zeal for souls and a devotion to the poor, grant that encouraged by his example, we may know you more clearly, we may love you more dearly, and we may follow you more nearly day by day, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit are alive and reign one God, now and forever. Amen. And now a change of complete mood. Some of you may know of my great love of history, and I became very intrigued by the American Civil War about 20 years ago. Perhaps it was the romance of the names like Chickamauga or um, Gettysburg and the Battle of Stones River. But I choose today to finish with a hymn, Mine Eyes Have Seen the Glory of the Coming of the Lord. It was adopted by the Americans under the title of The Battle Hymn of the Republic. I was aware from quite an early age that there are other versions, quite scurrilous versions, which were invented by the RAF during the war and which continue to be popular. But today we will sing it in its correct version. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He hath loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, alleluia. Glory, glory, alleluia. Glory, glory, alleluia, his truth is marching on. He has sounded out the trumpet that shall never sound retreat. He is sifting out all human hearts before his judgment seat. Oh, be swift, my soul, to answer him, be jubilant by feet. Our God is marching on. Glory, glory, alleluia, glory, glory, alleluia, glory, glory, alleluia, his truth is marching on. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea, with a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make us holy, let us live that all be free, whilst God is marching on. Glory, glory, alleluia, glory, glory, alleluia, glory, glory, alleluia, his truth is marching on. <coughs> clears the tubes that one so let us join in prayer in confidence as our saviour taught us our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as in heaven grant us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. 
Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us all from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And that is the end of our service this morning. I hope that perhaps under a canopy or shelter, you can just glimpse the, the summer sun and the glories it has without getting too frazzled by the sun, but enjoying the great outdoors just a little bit after this rather damp period of late spring. And I hope to be with you again next week. And who knows, the sunshine might still be uh, around by then. I gather that tonight or tomorrow we might have some wonderful thunderstorms bringing uh, rain into my garden and into yours. I love a good thunderstorm. I sit there and I will admit with a gin and tonic watching the lightning and listening to the crash of the thunder and glorying in this natural performance. May you have a good week and may we meet again next week as friends. Thank you so much for being with me. Goodbye.